Wisconsin. So we're going to go into the vineyard with Kara, and she's going to talk about what's going on in California this year, talk about 2023, where they're at, what they're doing, and how they're going to deal with the weather conditions. La Nina, is it El Nino sure. this year? I think it's El Nino this year. So, That's you know, again, you know, everybody has their own ideas about climate change. I have mine, which I'll keep to myself. I feel like they're not as popular as they would be in other parts of California. <laughs> Shocking. But I mean, I, I really believe that, you know, we, weather is weather and weather you weather. as a farmer, and essentially that's what you are. To I am. boil it down. 100%. You have a real feel for what's going on. And I think we need to explore the 2023 vintage with a grower. And that will give us some insight into how this wine year is going to go and what's going to make it be successful. Yeah. So this is where we are in the vineyard now. It is mid to late June, 28th today. Okay. Um, so everything is more delayed than I would say a normal, quote unquote, normal year would be which the would last be... seven years yeah is that fair so, six or seven years yeah i would say that our, all of our drought which is more of our normal years um it was a very late rain lots of rain i don't know exactly how many inches but probably well almost 30 i'm assuming if not more than that for the area just more than the last seven to ten years um would you say by this time last year you had color on these berries probably and they were definitely thicker so see they're gonna grow all together where all the berries are all touching each other but we are still in an early stage where there's lots of room between each of these we're actually still losing caps these brown little brown pieces were on top of all these berries before they became berries when they were flowers they're part of the flower so we actually still have a lot of those caps on. And how old is, do you say these vines are? These vines are planted somewhere between 98 and 2000. So they're almost 20. 22 yeah. to 25. Yep. Um, we had a lot of suckers this year because of all the rain and this is what a sucker is. It's basically a foliage that's growing that is not part of our main shoot. So this is the cordon. Each cordon, essentially, we'd like to have two shoots, one on the bottom of the spur and one on the top. And so all the foliage that grows that's not on those needs to come off because that's just wasted energy. Um, you want all the energy to go to growing and ripening the fruit. So we've already done our sucker pass for the year, but as we're going through again, we'll be pulling off these excess sucker I, mean, I feel like i'm constantly being like oh oh, oh. I, I can't i can't walk fast because i get sidetracked easily okay. so normally we would just do one of those passes um but since we're going back right now to do what we call pulling laterals uh, we're also doing a second sucker pass on a lot of these um, more vigorous vines this year that have a, a lot of more growth so again, to concentrate the energy to our two clusters per shoot, we're gonna do something called remove the laterals. So there, this is the leaf. See, it has one stem, one leaf. Mm -hmm. But then this excess growth is what we would call a lateral. So it's a vine. So it wants to grow out. It sure. wants to wrap around. So again, excess energy that's not needed. Really, somebody somewhere did some sort of study that says you need 17 leaves to fully ripen two clusters per shoot. So we don't need these laterals. They're just taking extra energy off of the vines and away from ripening the shoots. So that is what we're doing right now. We're going through and taking off these laterals so that we can focus the energy on the two clusters per shoot and this would have been typically done a little earlier right yes because, it would because have been of the growing drier, season exactly been. exactly so as we're going through we're taking off any excess like i said any excess suckers i mean look at this lateral it's like a full on another branch you yeah. know so it's mm -hmm. like no it's got to come off if you look down here you can see how our friends are you know touching arms across the aisle 
Right. I was just going to ask you about that, actually. So when I'm going through and doing my screen that I was talking about, I can't see in the middle of the night. It's pitch black. And if there are too many that are touching, I really can't see where I'm going. So um, since we only need 17 leaves, we go through and we cut off the Pack ends all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of the branches. Interesting. Um, so that's really where we are right now and what we're doing. This one, you can almost see all the like dead heads, all the dead flower heads, the caps that we talked about. I mean, they're still on there, which is unusual for mid to late June. So let me ask you, this doesn't look like granite to me. If these are Cabernet vines, right? Sure. Okay. In you mean the Bordeaux, dirt? The dirt? Yeah, the dirt. Okay. Yeah, it's not. They, granite. They, I'm sorry, not not granite. Um. Uh, yeah, granite. The whatever's in Bordeaux. Yeah. Is it yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Granite. Yeah. Anyway, because this is a different climate, because it isn't as maritime. Yeah. You don't need the rocks to make that soil to make these vines happy with the heat. Is that the situation? So this is more. We have two types of soil on our particular plot, and this soil is more our clay. It's called Clear Lake Clay. This is the exact soil type that's here. So it is more, uh, holds on to the water okay. down here. This is our more marshy area, I guess you would call yeah, it. Yeah, sort of, maybe. <laughs> um, so this has always been our more vigorous plot, so, so these always have a lot of growth, a lot of excess growth, um, so this is what we do to, you know, if, if I were to do what people now are calling like a no-till vineyard situation, right? So they don't disturb the ground, they don't till it, they leave weeds in the middle or some sort of cover crop. Right, cover crop, right, exactly. Right. Yeah, I so see we a lot do of cover mm -hmm. crop here, um, which would help with uh, the water. It would take up a lot of the water that would go to the vines because you want them stressed out a little. You don't mm -hmm. want them to, you don't want it too easy. You gotta make them you gotta make them stressed a little bit right right they work it's like well intermittent under fasting stress. for vines that's right exactly <laughs> they do well under stress so if i were to implement that i would definitely do it in this block because i would like the, the water competition for these vines just purely based on our soil type um, that would help um, so these are our last blocks to ripen out of all of our blocks um, it does start with our more uh, loam soil and more sandy soil ripens first and then these are usually the last to ripen um, and yeah that's just that's how we deal with it and just out of curiosity like how many weeks behind this year question. are you from say last year last year Ballpark. was like ridiculously early we had that uh, Labor Day heat spike mm -hmm. that I'm anticipating again this year which a heat spike doesn't necessarily ripen, but it definitely speeds everything up to where it needs to be picked. Otherwise, you're going to be picking raisins. Mm -hmm. uh, so Do you get thinner skins when there's when it's cool and then a heat spike, as opposed to like a longer hot season. Hmm. That's a great question. I don't know the answer to right. that, but well, I guess um, we'll find out, right? I mean, somebody who makes <laughs> wine would know. I would assume um, somebody smarter than me. Um, so I would like more even. Like you said, there's been a lot of a lot more cooler days, so that's what puts us behind a lot more water. So those two things are already working against us in terms of ripening, growing. You know, the growing degree days is what we go off of in terms of, of, of ripeness of what we're looking for. Um, so those things are already putting us back. So that heat spike last year really accelerated things. I mean, we were picking in early September, which we haven't done in 10 years because of all the things we were talking about, all our friend the drought and all those, all those um, elements. So we'll definitely be an October pick this year. I mean, we'll see how any heat spikes go and what that does to us later in the season. But if everything continues the way it does and we just get a gradual heat increase, um, we're looking at a, a mid-October, so we're probably a month behind where we were last year. All said and done. We'll also go through and we'll take off some of these shoulders, you know, to help with ripening again. Like, you don't need that little puny thing. You have these little yeah, hangers four, on. Yeah. Four, uh, 
berries that are just close Exactly. To the yeah, we call those shoulders or wings. So those will all come off to help with the ripening. Um, but the crop looks great. I mean, if everything continues and we don't get a crazy spike, it'll be a very healthy crop. Um, but yeah, we'll see what, what happens in the, the late summer when those heat spikes have, have been rearing their ugly heads. I mean, I feel like even if you get a heat spike, it's going to be a more racy year for wine, less jammy. Yeah. You feel like that's that's a fair assessment? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the stress is what gets you your complex flavors, mm -hmm. all your phenolics that you're looking for. And when they don't have the stress, I mean, these guys are, are full up, you know, they have everything that they yeah, they're want. Pretty happy they're, right yeah, now. Exactly. yeah, exactly. Cara, thanks Thank for you. drinking with us. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your trip. Pleasure. We're going to cut in a bunch of pictures and everything if we haven't done absolutely. so already. Like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again next time. Wine by the Day TV. Watch the next episode. It's going to be right over here. Thanks for watching. Kara, we'll see you again next time. Thanks.